warm up and get back into these sections. Let's try two problems, starting with problem number 54, which is 11 times the square root of 3 plus 2 times the square root of 3. And then likewise, problem number 66, which is hinting at things to come, working with cube roots. So 6 times the cube root of 5y plus 3 times the cube root of 5y. The thing about both of these is that they already have like terms. So in the first case, you've got square root of 3. Uh, out front, or excuse me, the square root of 3 is the like term. In the second case, you got cube root of 5y. But, you know, it doesn't really matter what the like term is. What we're going to do is just add up the coefficients. Now, maybe with this first one, I'll justify it a little bit. There's a greatest common factor of the square root of 3, so I'm going to factor out the square root of 3. You can see that if you distribute this, this times this, this times this, we get what we had up above. But the point of this is to show you that really what happens when we work with this is we add the coefficients. We get 11 plus 2 is 13. Now, do I want to see this step? No. I just want you to do it in your head and be done with it. But we'll do the same thing here. And we can do the same thing here because we have like terms. So what would I get over here? Good, 9 times the cube root of 5y. Now, another reason for doing this over here is to show you that we're just adding up the terms here in front, uh, adding the coefficients. We don't add what's underneath the radical. We don't get square root of 6, for instance. It's just add up the coefficients. And the same is true with 68. Now, what we did the other day is we practiced a little bit of working with things that had like terms. So let me give an example, kind of based on something that's in the book. Square root of 98 plus the square root of 50 minus the square root of 72. At first glance, you might be like, well, wait a minute, there's, there's no like terms there. And you're right. But there is some stuff that we can do with each of these to you know, get a little bit further along the problem. What we want to do is we want to break up each of these into square root of a perfect square times a number. So the first one is square root of 49 times 2. How about 50? What perfect square goes evenly into 50? 25 times 2. Good. And last but not least, 72. What number from our list over there goes into uh, 72 evenly? 36. Thank you. With that, we can rewrite each of these. This becomes 7 square roots of 2 plus 5 square roots of 2 minus 6 square roots of 2. And again, add up the coefficients. Okay, so 7 and 5 is 12, minus 6 is 6, so 6 square roots of 2. Nice. You can actually check yourself on your calculator. Now, this is the answer that I'm going to want on an exam, 6 square roots of 2. But if you can confirm that you got the right answer, you can compare the square root of 98 plus the square root of 50 minus the square root of 72. So that's one of our calculations. And let's compare that to 6 times the square root of 2. And they look pretty identical. So it's, it's a good way to double check your work when you're doing this on the exam. This is the answer that I'll be looking for, though. That's the exact answer. So I'm not looking for a decimal answer. You can use the decimal answer to check yourself. Um, if you went from 
here to here without showing me any work, I'd be a little bit nervous and you might lose some points. I'd say more than likely you would. Um, if you can do all this in your head, then you probably wouldn't be in this class. So I'd, I'd like to see a little bit of something. But it's in your best interest because if you make a small mistake, you know, if I saw this and then you put maybe a five here or a seven, I could tell that you just, you know, add or subtracted wrong and you don't lose a point. Let's do one more. Let's do a couple more. Uh, some work with cube roots. Now, when we're working with square roots, we're looking for a perfect square that divided these numbers. When we're looking with, excuse me, when we're working with cube roots, the story changes a little bit. So we'll start out kind of gently with problem number 64. Twenty-three times a cube excuse me, twenty-three times the fourth root of three plus the fourth root of forty-eight. All right, I don't happen to have a list of perfect fourth powers on the left-hand side board. I stopped at cubes. But let's, uh, let's just generate one for ourselves real quick. One to the fourth power is one. We're never really going to need that. Two to the fourth power. Anyone? Two, ten. Sixteen. Three to the fourth power is eighty-one. That's far enough. Forty-eight lies between these two numbers. So, let's see. Does 16 go into 48 evenly? Good. It goes in there three times. So, I'm going to rewrite this as the fourth root of 16 times the fourth root of 3. Well, the idea here is that we can simplify that first radical. What would the fourth root of 16 equal? Two. So I end up with two times the fourth root of three. Combine like terms. Not all at once. Thank you. 25 times the fourth root of three. But the idea is going to be the same here as with any power of a radical. So we could look, for instance, at problem number 70. And at least 70, we have some, uh, we have a list of the perfect cubes on the left-hand side board, at least the first 10, which should be sufficient. Cube root of 250 minus 4 times the cube root of 5. plus the cube root of 16. So again, kind of like our work with square roots, we want to break this up. Cube root of 15, or excuse me, cube root of 250 can be broken up into something times something else. I want that first something to be a perfect cube. Now 5, I don't think we're going to make any progress with 5. 5 is as broken up as it can be because it's already a prime number. But there are numbers that divide evenly into 16. So let's kind of reproduce our list of perfect cubes at least to a point. 2 cubed is 8, 3 cubed is 27, 4 cubed is 64, 5 cubed is 125, 6 cubed is 216, 7 cubed would be what, 343, and then 512, etc. Well, that's, that's good enough. So, take a look at 250. 250 is between these two. Work your way up the list. Try and find a perfect cube that divides 250 evenly. And then do likewise with 16. Find a number from this list that divides 16 evenly.
So, Amanda, did you find a number that divides 250 evenly from this list? Good, 125 times 2. Thank you. Dylan, how about one from this list? Can we get there? Someone got that one? 8 and 2. So, the idea here is that these first radicals are things you can simplify. Cube root of 125. Well, what do you cube to get 125? 5. So 5 times a cube root of 2 minus 4 times a cube root of 5 plus, what's the last one? 2 times a cube root of 2. Are these all like terms? No. Which ones can I add? First one and the third one. Those are like terms. When I combine these, what would I get? Good. Seven cube roots of two minus four times a cube root of five, and that's it. Cube root of two and cube root of five are not like terms. You can't go any farther. You can't subtract the coefficients. You can't combine the radicals. That's it. Done with that one. Now in the homework, I'm pretty much going to avoid higher and higher powers. I think they got some some sixth roots in the homework, etc. But we'll just keep it to simpler roots, cube roots, and square roots for the most part. But how are we doing on problem 70? Are you okay with that one? All right. What makes this work pretty nice is that you've got the cube root of a perfect cube, the cube root of something cubed, and that's what helped us out there. Let's see if we can't uh, extend that idea a little bit to rationalizing denominators. So that's kind of like the last part of this section. We'll warm up with problems like uh, 46 and 50, and then we'll move on to some, uh, some more challenging ones where we're actually asked to rationalize these expressions. So problem 46 is the square root of 128 over the square root of 2. Well, when you're dividing or multiplying, you can break up radicals. And this is a property that I've used before. Square root of A over B equals the square root of A divided by the square root of B. And likewise, square root of A times B. Well, we just finished using that one. The square root of a times square root of b. Often we'll use it in this direction, but sometimes it's helpful to use it in this direction. And problem 46 is a nice example of that. What if I brought that all together as one radical? Can anyone see an advantage in that? What, what, what helps out? Or what's, what's that help out with? Yeah. Good. Square root of 64, and that's just a nice even 8. Nice. Likewise, let's take a look at problem number 50. Some work with cube roots. Cube root of 64, y to the 8th. Over the cube root of 8y squared. Well, as before, we're going to break that up into two radical or into one radical, uh, the radical of a fraction, 64y to the eighth over 8y to the second. And again, we're going to get some nice simplification here. This is going to simplify as a cube root of 8y to what power? 6 power. Good. You subtract the exponents. 8 minus 2 gives you the 6 power. Nice. How about the cube root of this thing, though? What's the cube root of that one? Do it a piece at a time. And what's the cube root of 8? 2. What's the cube root of y to the 6 power? Nice. y squared. Remember from our work with rational exponents, 
6 gets divided by the index of the radical. So 6 divided by 3 is 2. So y squared. Nice. But what happens if you don't have something that simplifies very, very nicely there in the denominator? Well, then you're going to have to do some work. And let's, let's move in that direction. Uh, you know what? I don't think we need to worry about that until the next section. So uh, let me finish up section 9.3 with uh, one or two more problems, and then we'll then we'll be done. Then we'll work on rationalizing denominators in the next section. So to finish up, let's take a look at problem 38. Square root of three-fourths. Now again, I'm going to go back and use this idea here, that the square root of a fraction is the fraction of the square roots. I can break it up. So this time I'm going to move from here to here, and I think the reason should be clear once you put that denominator together. Square root of four simplifies pretty nicely, right? In fact, that's going to be our goal in the next section when we rationalize denominators is to get a perfect square here in the denominator. So I end up with square root of 3 over 2. Which one? How about if I do problem 24? Um, better yet, eh, let's see. We'll do problem 24. And I'll, I'll bump it up a little bit to make it similar to 23. So, problem 24-ish. So I'm going to change it a little bit just to make it uh, a little bit more challenging. Square root of 75a. B to the, let's see, B to the uh, ninth and C to the fifth. Well, what we need to do here is we need to break this up into two radicals. I want all the perfect square stuff out front. And the stuff that's not a perfect square is going to go back here. So let's start with the number 75. All right, so 25 goes into 75 three times. So put the 25 out in front because it's a perfect square. Now, the important part to catch here is what's going to happen with b to the ninth. If you were to think about it, up front of this radical, there's understood to be a 2. And 2 doesn't go into 9 evenly. It doesn't go into 5 evenly because these are odd numbers. So here's what we'll do. I'm going to rewrite b to the ninth as b to the eighth times b to the first. Now, how does that help me? Well, if I put a b to the 8th here, because this is an even exponent, it's now a perfect square. So I'll put a b to the 8th here, and that leaves that extra b over here in the second radical. What do you suppose I'm going to do with c to the 5th? Good, c to the 4th times c to the 1st. So again, you're splitting up those perfect squares so you put the perfect square out in front, and then the other stuff just left over goes in the second radical. Is that what you're looking for? This is what to do with those odd exponents? OK. Now, as far as the rest of this is concerned, nothing happens with this one. That stays the same. But you can take the square root of that first term, and when you do, get rid of the radical. Sometimes people keep the radical here. Make sure you get rid of the radical. When you do that, 5, b to what power, c to what power? Good, b to the fourth, c squared. So it's understood that there's a 2 out here. That 2 is just going to divide each of those exponents.
Nice. Okay, so let me give you a complete homework list for this section. For homework, try 13 through 17, 21 through 25, 29, 31, 45 through 49. I'm being really picky here because I don't want you having to deal with really high powers of radicals, or radicals with a high index, and then 65 through 69. So I'm not sure that that's a whole lot more than we assigned the other day, but it should keep you busy between now and Wednesday. So that's section 9.3.